Good morning, lovely people. Today, I would like to talk about uh, the coaching that I gave yesterday. I gave, a, I gave an aquaponics coaching. Nothing unusual, but uh, one of the students I was coaching um, explained me what he was doing uh, with, his, with his aquaponics system. And something completely shocked me. So that's why I want to share this with you uh, to make sure that you don't make this mistake. So first, I want to say that the guy is a beginner in aquaponics and very nice guy and he's trying to do his best. So what I am sharing now is nothing, nothing to criticize, uh, nothing negative against uh, the student, you know? student is doing the good thing, is trying to get some information, so uh, it's nothing wrong with him, but I think there is a lack of information on the uh, on internet. It's not, a, it's not actually a lack of information, but it's, uh, it's wrong information that is uh, circulated around. So I really want to make this video today to, uh, to emphasize uh, one point. So if you saw the title of the video, you, you, you know that we're going to talk about the spaces of fish that uh, you should have in your aquaponics system, how to select the fish, and especially the spaces of fish that you shouldn't have. So I have already made some videos on this topic, and uh, in this video, I really want to be focusing on the mistake I saw, uh, because I think it's dramatic. And uh, unfortunately, if we see too many people making these mistakes, those, those type of single mistake can just stop you from growing food in aquaponics. I will just take another example. Imagine you have a garden. You have a garden and you are a new gardener. You don't know. You don't know how gardening works, but you want to start gardening. So imagine you are living in the no northern of Europe. So the, the climate is very cold, right? Imagine if you are talking to someone who is living in the Ecuador or someone who is living in a tropical country. If you talk about gardening, someone is, the person is going to say, oh, passion fruit are really good for me, they work really well. Or he's going to talk about tropical plants. And if you're living in the, in the north and you have no idea, you may be tempted to grow the same thing as this person. But of course, if you live in the north, if you live somewhere where it's very cold, but it's cold in winter, you will not be able to grow tropical plants, right? If you are in winter, even you need to follow the season as well, right, in the garden. If you are in winter, you are not going to grow tomato if you are in the north. Even if you are in the south, such as I am, I am in Australia, in Melbourne, I can't grow tomato in winter. They will die if I do that. So that's the type of things we need to take into consideration. And uh, the mistake I saw yesterday, this guy, very nice guy, and trying to do good things, you know, in aquaponics. He was uh, growing tilapia in France. So, you know, in France, in winter, you got minus mi negative temperatures. And tilapia is a tropical fish. It needs 23, 24 degrees and above. So as you can imagine, it's not going to work, and, and uh, he, he followed some guys who told him, oh, no, you can grow tilapia, no problem in France, you just need a heater. Well, of course, you can, anything is possible, right? But you, we need to think about, about this approach, the aquaponics approach from a sustainable, sustainable perspective. When you grow fish, when you grow plants, how much is it going to cost you to produce those fish? If you have to use a heater and you're outside, and this guy was using IBC, so it's off-ground aquaponics with plastic, so very thin, uh, very thin layer of plastic for the tanks, which means that there is almost no insulation. You imagine if you have to heat this volume of water, you will consume a huge quantity of electricity, and it's not going to work. It's, it's going to 
it's not going to be efficient and even with a heater you need a very strong and and a powerful heater otherwise you will if you use an aquarium heater you will never be able to maintain the water temperature at 24 degrees celsius which means that you will lose the fish but imagine if you have a very strong heater and you are able to maintain the temperature at 24. can you imagine the electricity consumption can you imagine the impact on the environment to grow a few fish and a few plants? Guys, honestly, we need to take, you need to take responsibility for our action. Earth is going, the planet is dying, right? We are killing the planet. We are doing so many wrong things. So please, when we do an aquaponic system, when we grow fish, when we grow plants, let's choose them properly, right? Let's, let's be smart and think, don't think, oh, what, what would I like to grow? You know, myself, I like one fish which is called Baramundi. It's, a, it's an Australian fish. I mean, it's not specifically Australian, but we have this fish a lot in Australia. In, in the north of Australia, it's a tropical fish. Of course, I'm never going to have Baramundi here because Baramundi is like tilapia. It needs 23, 24 degrees Celsius. If I put the fish here, in winter I have 8 degrees Celsius. Fish is going to die straight away. Do you think I'm going to put a heater here to heat all this volume of water and all the grow beds at the back? Well, technically I could, but why would I do that? I would just ruin the planet. I would consume so much energy just to heat some water to hopefully grow a fish that is not supposed to live here. It's a terrible idea. Terrible idea. So it's good to, you know, to grow some food at home and uh, trying to do our best, trying to have a nice system, but we can't be selfish. We have to think, what is the impact of what I am doing on the planet? Is it gonna have a negative impact or a positive impact? Is it gonna be sustainable or not? And then think about your wallet. Think about the, the money that it costs to grow those fish. Honestly, if you grow a tropical fish and you are living in an area where in winter the temperature is negative, your fish is going to cost you probably 100 times what it would cost you if you buy it as a fishmonger. So stop it straight away. It has to be financially viable. I'm not saying that because you are growing your own food and it's healthy, maybe you are able to, you are happy to pay, to pay a bit more. So, so even if it costs you the same as in the supermarket, you will, some people will be happy with this. But you can't, it doesn't make any sense to pay 100 times more than what you would pay in the supermarket. My view is that if you are growing it, you are spending time. And of course, it's time that we enjoy. We enjoy growing our fish. But my view is that if you are growing it, it should be cheaper than buying from the supermarket. It should be way cheaper, actually. So if you, instead of growing fish that are not adapted to the area where you live, try to see what is growing around you. Try to go to the fish farm around, asking what they are growing. Try to see what is growing in the lake, in the rivers. I already said that in other videos, but at the base. You don't, you don't look at the fish and then say, oh, okay, I need to find a good condition for this fish. You look at the conditions that you can have in your aquaponic system wherever you live. And then, based on those conditions, based on the water temperatures that you can maintain during the year, then you will think, okay, what fish is adapted to this, to, to this water, to this specificity? That's how we select the fish. So, sorry, I'm a bit emotional. And uh, again, I want to repeat this. Everybody make mistakes. And this student actually followed someone, follow a, a supposed uh, aquaponics teacher. So please be very careful. Don't, don't listen to this type of bullshit. We need to be reasonable. We need to think what we are doing. And uh, sustain uh, sustainability is very important. In my eyes it is, but it should be in your eyes as well, guys. If you are doing this, it means you love nature. If you love nature, we need to do everything to preserve it. And what about our kids? What about future generation? We need to take responsibility. We are in 2021. A lot of things are going wrong. So we can't just think, oh, I want to grow tropical fish in my backyard just because I like those fish. No. That's not how it works. We need to be responsible. We need to do the right thing. We need to design the aquaponics system the right way. If you're not able to do that, or if you're not willing to do that, please don't watch my videos. I don't want to hear anything about you. 
If I am here is to teach people how to to be sustainable and to have a to minimize the impact on the environment. I know it's very hard to have a positive impact on the environment, but at least minimize our impact. This is the idea. And you see, I always say I don't want to see plastic in my backyard because I want to have harmony. As much as I want to have harmony, I also want to have a positive impact. I want to, I want to minimize my impact on the planet. So when I grow things, I want to grow them on a sustainable way. And you should be, you should have the same mindset. If you don't have the same mindset, please stop watching my videos and please don't send me any comment. I don't want to have anything to do with you. If you don't give a about the planet, I don't give a about you. Sorry for using those words. But that's really what I feel. I, I can't believe that in 2021, some people are still, are still recommending to, to grow tropical fish in, in cold countries. Same thing. If you live in a tropical country, don't try to grow trout. Same thing. You are not going to try to to cool the water. Yeah. Don't try to cool the water if if the water is at 24 degrees. You don't want to to use a system because that exists as well. You can use you can use some device to decrease to cool the water. It's it costs even more energy than heating the water. So same thing when you. When you want an aquaponic system, when you want to grow some food, make sure whatever you want to grow is adapted to wherever you live. You don't want to change the environment. Then you can put a greenhouse on top. I don't say there is nothing wrong with greenhouse. It's very good. But if you don't have a greenhouse, and even with a greenhouse, if the temperatures are negative outside, you will not be able to maintain a tropical fish inside the greenhouse unless you use some very specific systems. There are some systems to heat the water that are kind of sustainable, and, um, but they are very specific. And I, I, I think I talked about it a little bit before. It's a technique to heat the water with manure. But honestly, it's a lot of work. Who is going to do that? I don't think you're going to do this. I don't think most people who watch my channel, they're going to play with manure to heat the water. So then some people say, oh yeah, I have a solar system, so I don't pay the electricity. And this, I don't want to comment. I don't want to comment. For me, I don't think there is free energy because at the end of the day, the solar panels, we need to make them and everything. But in a certain way, I think they, they, they seem to be way more sustainable than, of course, electricity from, from the grid. Uh, but I don't want to comment too much because if I start to comment things that I, I don't really, I'm not an expert in, I, I don't know really what is the impact on the planet, then I'm gonna start to say, to say things that are outside of my knowledge. That's why I don't wanna comment solar panels. They seem good to me, but I don't wanna say, I, I still, even if I had solar panels, I wouldn't grow tropical fish in a cold country. Yeah? Let's try to take responsibility for what we are doing and, and let's uh, try to be, to be respectful of the environment of the planet. You see how beautiful it is? I just come here in the morning, I feed my fish and they, they maintain this whole ecosystem. You know what? I feel super grateful for that. But if you guys start to grow tropical fish in cold countries, one day I will not be able to do this anymore because life on this planet will become impossible. So we have everything in nature to be happy. We have all natural cycles and ecosystems around us that are wonderful, that we can get inspired from, that we can use, that we can enjoy. It's not only using, it's not only taking things. It's also just, you know, being amazed by the beauty of nature. So let's try to keep things as they are and not get them worse. I know it's going to be worse anyway in, in, the, years, in the coming years. Uh, climate change is a real stuff, guy. We need to do whatever we can to, to stop it. Or not, we are not going to stop it anyway, but to, to slow it down. So guys, if you... I, I don't want to... I don't want to upset anyone here again. And the students, they try to learn. So it's not against the students that I'm talking. It's about... It's against people who give advice and don't... 
don't mind about the environment. It just drives me completely crazy and insane. <sighs> Let me know in the comments, please, guys. I need some support here. I need to know that most of people who watch those videos, they care about the environment. And when you design something, when you design an aquaponic system, one of your goals is to minimize your impact on the planet, to produce food locally, to not import it from the other side of the planet. And if you, if you are in this mindset, and if you want to start aquaponics, then you are at the right place. Then we have to work together. Because this is what I'm here for. I'm here for helping people who are in this mindset and who want to be sustainable, who want to grow food in the backyard, who want to minimize the impact on the planet, who want to consume local food, who want to consume real food, food that is healthy, tasty. And at least they know what they are putting in, the, in their plates and what they are giving to the children. That's what I'm here for. So if it's the case, if you are here for that, there is a link in the description to join the movement. Call this movement the Aquaponics Revolution Movement. Because there is enough to produce food without any respect for the environment, for the planet, for the beauty of nature. We can do better than that. We can do much better, and we will. So join the movement. Okay, guys, I, I will uh, let you hear and I will uh, try to do some meditation now because my energy is a bit high now. <laughs> so I will try to calm down and I wish you a lovely day. I see you in the next video. Bye.